Perfect. Today I'm going to show you how to set up the micro mill. First of all, we have to turn on the computer. The computer is on the floor. You do have to unlock it, push it and press the button. And the computer is starting. You also have to turn on the micro mill. It's a button on the right back side. Then this yellow light um, shows us that it has been turned on and the computer is starting. You are always asked if you do want to activate Windows. Don't do it, just click Ask Me Later. And here, just click on OK. The next step is to actually start the Micromill software, which is just called Micromill and can be found here. Say yes when it asks you if it uh, do you want to allow the following program from an unknown publisher to make changes to this computer? And uh, this team viewer keeps asking you if you want to connect to the internet. This computer does not have an internet connection, so that's not even a possibility. Just click cancel. In the meanwhile, the software is starting and it is important that you do have these green checks on all boxes. Don't do anything while the micro mill is still moving. And now I'm going to guide you through the setup of the micro mill itself, the setup checklist, and then how to start a sample run. Once we do have the autolit section, which we have previously glued on a glass light, I do use double-sided tape to glue it on the sample stage in the middle of it. Just. So first of all, you do put the sample stage with a section on the micro mill and tighten it with a screw to the right side so the sample can't move anymore. Next is to set up uh, these checklists. The system calibration doesn't have to be in every time, it's just if you have done major changes, like if you have uh, replaced spare parts, um, which always have to be done after you restarted the software, is the stage calibration and then also the sample thickness for every new sample you take. Um, the first step is the stage calibration and I'm going to guide you through this now. For the stage calibration you do have to have a look at the micro mill itself. You can see these three different black boxes or blocks and they do have to be aligned. You can see that here for example it is not properly aligned. So I can move the stages manually by using these green double arrows on the screen. So as you can see, uh, it's actually if you press to the right side, it's moving to the left. Uh, so don't be confused um, by that. And then I just feel if they are aligned, so it doesn't have to be one micrometer correct. It's just that it feels like they are aligned. Once you feel comfortable about it, you do click on stages calibrated. And the micro mode does its job. So now you can see that it turned green, so the stages are success or were successfully calibrated. The next step is the sample thickness before we can actually start setting up a drill run. So for that, 
I firstly turn on the light, or it, <clears throat> which can be found here. And usually it's fine if you put it like to mid light level. Um, and uh, now we are moving this axis further down using the arrows here again. So we can actually see the sample. focus it and now so the sample thickness is important so the micromel knows how thick your sample is it also includes the thickness of the glass light as well as of the tape so um, the sample thickness is usually between two to three um, millimeter and so what I do is I position um, this cross here that it's for sure above the sample um, because, as I said, we do want to measure the sample thickness and we don't want to measure it um, on the epoxy, for example. So now to measure the sample thickness um, is click on the sample thickness, say measure new value, next. Now I go here, I change the view from scope where we currently are, which is like the microscope view, to the drill view. So I click on the drill. And then I make sure that the drill is really above the sample. So I just have a look and see that it is above the sample, which it is, and then I click Next. So now the micromill is automatically measuring the thickness of the sample. And as I said, it should usually be two to three millimeter. We click OK. Mm -hmm. And now we change the view again to scope, just by clicking on scope. Perfect. So now we are setting up the drill path. Imagine the sample hadn't been drilled before. So what I do is setting up the drill um, path. So here we are interested in drilling the core of the otolith and I click on tools and use the line tool. So I just click here on the line. So you would normally put alcohol on? Right? Sorry, yes. So normally I would put some ethanol. I can just demonstrate it here. I use a cotton bud with some ethanol, put it on the outlet section to get a better, and just enhances the visibility of the growth pattern. And I'm sure that I take the right part of the outlet. Then I follow the growth pattern just by clicking it. So every point is uh, one click to the left with the mouse. Started, you would click on the line tool, is that right? Yes. I click on the line tool, and then once I'm done with my pattern, it's a right click, so I finish this pattern. And this is the part here in between I'm interested in. But we do have to consider that the drill bit does have a diameter of 180 micrometer, so we add this to the actual growth pattern. Um, to make sure that we do not lose anything of the material we're interested in. Therefore, we do click on this green line above here, which says show hide the cut removal path in the video window. So it adds 180 micrometer to both sides of the line. So now we go, or we're still in the tool, um, line tool, and we do just follow this outer line again by clicking on the left
as we see a lot of circles now and to make it a bit um, clearer, we do click on this um, symbol again, which has now three lines and this black um, double-sided arrow. And we do see these two lines. Um, the outer line is the one we actually, sorry, um, that was not meant to happen. The outer line is actually um, the line we're going to draw. One more thing, if you do want to move a line, you always have to click on the arrow here, which says select pattern, and then you can move around a pattern if you think you have to make any adjustments or changes because it's not perfectly set up. So as I said, we do want to um, drill this outer line, which is here called line two. You can always see which line you, um, yeah, is the defined pattern because this is the one shown in yellow. And um, so before um, I start making some property changes here, it is important to increase the drill speed. It's always going down to five once you have closed the software, but we always want to um, drill with a speed of 95%. So we just change it to 95 and it's going to be set to 95 until you close the software. So now actually to the setups of the drill pattern and the defined pattern we're interested in. So as I said, we click on the line, then it's with the left, then it's right click and we do go to properties. Um, so these passes are the ones um, which are the default ones and usually work um, very well for cord orthoids. So this is the number of passes, the scan speed and the depth per pass and then you can calculate how deep you go. Um, so 30 times 20 is 600, so you're going to drill about 600 um, micrometer deep. Um, so this is all perfectly set up. You don't have to make any changes here and you can click on OK. Um, then we actually want to start the drill. So still um, line two, we say here one run scans. And here it is very important that, it always, uh, that you just choose selected patterns only, otherwise it would drill both lines. And um, then, so this is always unchanged, the 200 micrometer per second. Um, and then you just click enable drill during scans, which is very important, otherwise it's just scanning it, but not actually drilling. And you can start one. And now the micromill is drilling the sample. Either you can, yeah, you could just... Or is there a raster and option? It, I think it is even called raster, but I have to say that I have never used it. Um, but I guess yeah. from how it looks like, yeah. okay. you could just do that and it would take all of that. And that's defined as a new line and then you just... Exactly, so it's like actually, I mean, there are several lines, but it would just um, collect it that way and you could just go to properties again. Um, I think here this raster spacing does not matter as it looks like it's taking all mm -hmm. of it. Uh, the same settings yeah. and st start the drill again. Yeah, okay, perfect. So you called it perfectly. Yes, good timing. Okay, perfect. So the drill is done now. Then you do click on close and change to the scope mode to make sure that the drill bit is not on top of the sample anymore. Um, but so the next step is to actually put the sample material into a vial. So there are these small tubes. Here, which I previously cleaned with milliQ water. So it's a little conical vial? Yes, it's yeah. any kind of Eppendorf cup does it. Um, and then you use this... Uh, the curved probe? Exactly, curved probe. And this is a bit of a practice task. It's the best to kind of, you know, put it all together. I'm not, I hope you can see it. Yeah. And then use the forceps. We should also have another one, but and then 
gently transfer it to the sample vial. So that looks good. Then I close the vial, just this, so you can see all the sample material. Um, so of course, do label these sample vials. So just with a permanent marker, for example, do write either on the lid or on the side which sample it is. Um, and then what is very important is to always clean the micro well um, between um, every run to make sure that you do not contaminate any samples. So I uh, already showed this before. I mean, in this case, if you run a second and it's um, just part of the core, you would also put it in the same sample vial. You do not have to clean because it's one sample. But if you continue with the core of the next ultimate section, then you should clean it properly, which includes, so first of all, just to get um, rid of like the more coarse material, um, I use this gun for the compressed air. And just clean it, also the drill bit, which is very important. Then I use my cotton bud again with some ethanol to clean the drill bit. And then you could uh, just, if you're done with that sample and you do not need any of these lines anymore, you can just take the sample stage, take it here, and remove the section from this sample stage. This works putting a drop of ethanol just next to it. Using the razor plate, and you can just gently remove it. Be careful that you do not break the glass. And that's it. So um, you do have to turn off the micro mill by using the button in the back, it's on the right side, and shut down the computer.